Hello all! Before I get into this video and talk about all the great weird and wild creatures of today, I need to give some very, very special thank yous to you all. We have officially hit 100 subscribers and actually, as of the time I'm making this video, we're actually at 107 subscribers, so we have been growing at such a remarkable rate. I am so incredibly thankful for that, you guys, really. Your likes and subscriptions mean so much, and especially all those comments. Thank you all again for helping me reach 100 subscribers and beyond. So, with all of that being said, I know you guys came here to see some more weird and wild creatures, so let's go ahead and jump into that right now. Now, after the intro, of course. Breaking news! A new episode of Let's Be Frank starting now! So, of course, as per the usual, we are going to be starting off today with the monsters of the past. And I have for you guys today the Oviraptor. Now, talk about a strange looking dinosaur. It. Come on, it completely reminds me of a chicken. Obviously, just based upon, you know, the beak it's got. And, and, and speaking of its beak, uh, scientists have said that it's this, this dinosaur is the strangest combination of, like, a, a one built for, like, eating plants and being an herbivore. Like, of course, with its head and its beak and everything. But it's also got the body and the claws of something that would attack and need to, like, tear at flesh and everything. It's a complete mystery to the scientific field. Actually, if you want to flip this card around, you can see a different picture of it. And notice that even inside of its weird beaked mouth, it does have two giant buck teeth sticking down. And scientists have said that that was probably for cracking open eggs. And maybe it was an egg thief, like a lot of those uh, small, thin, like fast dinosaurs were. But who knows? Uh, there's a lot of mystery surrounding this dinosaur, and it looks so unique, and that's why I wanted to show it off today. Alright, anyway, that is the Oviraptor, so now that we've gone over the monsters of the past, we can move on to the present and talk about the Nightmares of Nature. And now that we're talking about the Nightmares of Nature, I want to bring up the Whipworm, a parasitic, tiny little creature. Now kind of a gross thing i don't typically tend to wash my vegetables after buying them i know a lot of people tell me i should but most of the time when i'm buying vegetables or 100 percent of the time i cook them you know and so i feel as though anything harmful in the vegetables and whatnot will be cooked out and dead through the heat but Reading this card really makes me want to start washing them as well as cooking them, letting the, the water and the flames do the work. Because these whipworms hide their tiny, like, microscopic eggs on vegetables. And when a human consumes them, the eggs get inside their system and then they hatch. And now you got whipworms in your body. Good going. Wash your vegetables. They point that right back around at me. Wash your vegetables. <laughs> and then once these whipworms hatch, more and more can start, you know, making more eggs in your body. And all of a sudden, you've got a huge infestation inside of you. And this can cause anything from just stomach aches to blood disease. So you don't want anything to do with these whipworms. Um, funny enough, probably the, the thing that made me want to choose this card for today was that you can actually tell which gender the whipworm is. Like, for a microscopic creature, I feel like that's not always the most common thing. Um, if you flip the card around again, you can see that a male whipworm's tail curls at the end and the female's does not. I don't know, I find that interesting, you know, you don't always see a lot of, lot of gender differences in microscopic creatures, maybe you do, maybe you do, I don't study microscopic creatures very often, I just thought it was neat, hopefully you did too, wash your vegetables, you do not want 
whip worms. Why are there so many worms that want to get inside your stomach? I'm going to stop talking about parasitic worms that can attack your body. Uh, let's talk about the toxic terrors now. And for the toxic terrors, I want to show you guys the helmet jellyfish. Oh boy, where to begin? All jellyfish are pretty scary because just one touch and, you know, you're gonna be in a lot of pain. And then you gotta pee on the sting and that's just gross. You don't want that to happen. But a lot of jellyfish out there won't just give you a painful sting. They'll just straight up kill you with one touch. <laughs> These things can live up to 30 years, which I, I never would have guessed a jellyfish could be live that long. I don't know why, it just doesn't, this doesn't seem right. <laughs> and, and not only that, once they hatch from their eggs, which, again, I never really envisioned jellyfish hatching from eggs, but you know what? At least the helmet jellyfish does. I mean, you, know, you know that for a fact. Um, it waits a few months before it, it eats for the first time. And, and speaking of it eating, it can use its tentacles like an octopus does and reach out and grab things. Oh my gosh, this thing sounds like a horror story. Like, imagine a giant version of this. It's scary enough on its own, but man, this thing could easily replace the giant kraken as like the symbol of everything a fisherman and, and sea voyager needs to avoid. <laughs> Obviously, it would be super scary to encounter this thing, in, like in the ocean. But you gotta admit, it looks super cool, too. Even if we flip the card around, which, if you haven't guessed already, is I want to start showing both sides of the card in these videos, because a lot of times on the back of the card, you get to see what the creature looks like in real life, as long as it's, you know, a real creature, and not a monster of the mind or something. Um, and you can see it, it looks exactly like it does on the front of the card. And it, it, it's one of the coolest jellyfish I've ever seen. <laughs> But yeah, uh, stay out of the ocean. There's no point in going in the ocean when there's so many garbage creatures like that that exist. All right, moving on now. Speaking of the ocean, we're going to stay in the ocean and move on to the monsters of the deep. So we're staying in the ocean, but moving from jellyfish to regular fish and talking about the tripod fish. Uh, this fish has got legs. <laughs> Not, okay, not like real legs like humans have, but but legs like, uh, that are like stilts. This fish looks like it's walking on stilts. Because of these long, stilt-like legs, the fish can stand up, you know, technically, in the mucky ocean floor without sinking in. Because otherwise, you know, it's like quicksand for the poor fish. It's, it's just so, it's so unique. Like, I mean, let's, let's go ahead and flip this card around. <laughs> Is that a cool gimmick? You like that? I like that. I like it. It's fun. Honestly, it looks just kind of like a regular old, like, sardine fish or whatever. It doesn't look too special, but I gotta say, just the fact that it's got built-in... <laughs> Uh, stilts on its body is so funny to me. This fish ain't gonna sink nowhere. Actually, tripod fish are kind of cool for another reason. They are one of the uh, those few fish that can swap their gender, like a clownfish, and they can fertilize their own eggs, which is which is really cool. You know, not a lot of fish or creatures in general can do that. So the fact that the tripod fish is just one of those unique fish is just another reason that makes it worth talking about. But I've said fish on stilts quite enough this video, so now we're gonna move on to the next section, which is Tiny Terrors. And so for the Tiny Terrors card, I wanted to talk about dust mites. Now, when I go to choose a card that I wanna talk about from any of these categories, I always wanna find something that I personally haven't heard of or haven't heard much of, just cause it's cool to find out something new about a new creature. However, dust mites are something I think everybody knows about. They're all over your bed, they're all over your skin, your hair, your clothes, your floor. Dust mites are inescapable. But they're just so disturbing. It's just so disturbing to imagine that all over us, right now, are millions upon millions of microscopic tiny little creatures we're never going to see that are living their own lives. I hate it. <laughs> Fun fact, 
Did you know when a dust mite gets one of your dead skin cells in its mouth, it'll drool all over it in order to turn it into this soup that it then slurps up? <laughs> you like that? <laughs> it's happening right now as we speak. <laughs> It's crazy. This world is home to so many absolutely horrible things from ginormous beasts in the ocean to tiny microscopic beans on your flesh and in your bed and on your shirts. Oh, it's, uh, it's a joy-filled world. <laughs> I just like reminding people that there are always constantly little tiny things on them no matter where they go. So you're never truly alone. Never forget that. Wholesome, wholesome moment over. <laughs> All right, those were, that was our tiny terror entry. And let's move on next to the, the strange wonders and talk about the world's heaviest bug. Yes, for our strange wonder, we are gonna be talking about the giant Weta. Weta, Weta? I'm gonna say Weta. And yes, you heard me right. It is the world's heaviest bug. And it can weigh up to, are you ready for this? Drum roll, please. Two and a half ounces. <laughs> what are you gonna do? So let's flip this bad boy around and talk about how even though this is the world's heaviest bug, it is also among the rarest. Yeah, this bug apparently lives on like one small island in New Zealand, you know, and it only comes out at night. So pretty sure you will never see one of these in your life, except for here. <laughs> yeah, look at it on that man's hand. That's, that's a full grown man's hand. That is a big, that is a giant bug. And we're all used to bugs, you know, not living very long. But this frickin' giant Weta can live up to four years. That, that is longer than, like, a hamster, I believe. Don't they only live to, like, two to three years, maybe four? That is so beyond crazy. But again, we will likely never come across them. Until the last day of 2020, where a plague of giant Weetas invades the U.S. and the rest of the world. That's gotta be how this year ends. Something's gotta happen to end off this year. I'm scared to know what it is. But we come to YouTube to escape real life. And speaking of escaping real life, it is time for that part of the video where we talk about the monsters of the mind. Let me tell ya, you, you're gonna wish we didn't. Today's monster of the mind horrible demon spawn is brought to you by the Nandi people from Africa. This is one of their legendary creatures and it is called the Nandi bear. And just look at that horrible, horrible eye. <laughs> but their eye isn't even the worst part. No, for some reason, the Nandi bears are after our brains. Yeah. That's apparently the thing they want to eat the most. Whenever they attack a human, they go in, slice open their head, and take their brain. In fact, if we flip this card around, we can actually see the Nandi Bear holding a brain in his claws. And let me just get off the screen for a second really quick. If we look close down at the very bottom of the card, you can see the Nandi bear jumping down from the treetops to attack a man. And then it just, the next picture you see is just his head completely cut open and the Nandi bear licking his brain. Wonderful imagery, weird and wild creatures. Thank you very much for, for that. Once again, I've said it a hundred times, I'll say it again. I am just so drawn to the fact that these were made for kids and yet they still show such graphic imagery. But but these bears were insane. They're not even real bears. As you could you saw earlier, they have like the head of a bear, but they have like the build of a gorilla with those long lanky arms and the spots of a hyena. A lot of people think that Nandi bears may just be like super jacked hyenas or something. 
but these things can actually stand up to like or over 10 feet tall and break down the door of a Nandi tribesman's home with just one swipe and they, they're a force to be reckoned with and one that you really can't win against they're big they're fast they're strong the whole combination of a really bad time but that's all i have to say about the nandi bear and that means we are at the end of the video once again guys i am so truly thankful we've made it to a, we've made it over a hundred subscribers you know at the very start when i was creating this channel i i probably said this before already but it was aaron and, and kyle another friend of ours who, who kind of pushed me to make it they said they thought it'd be a really good idea a fun one and they were right i've had so much fun interacting with you guys in the comments and on social media and you know i can't wait for the future because i'm gonna keep going i'm gonna keep making videos and i know you guys are really enjoying the weird and wild creatures videos too because as i've said in every weird and wild creatures video the likes just keep growing. The likes just keep going up. And that means so much to me because these cards mean so much to me. This is a major part of my childhood. And I'm glad I can share it with you all. So expect another Weird and Wild Creatures video in maybe a month and a half. Something like that. I, I like to space them out quite a bit because I do have a lot of other really fun things I want to do as well. But don't worry. These videos won't cease anytime soon. And with all that being said, don't forget to like and subscribe. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. Um, but with all that being said, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think of the video. And follow my Instagram, Let's Be Frank 2020 All right. Thank you all for watching. And until next time.